So I put liquid metal on one of my graphics cards a while back, but it didn't quite work out. More after the intro. Hey everybody, this is Chris with Coalition Gaming back with another video. I hope you all had a good Christmas. And uh, yeah, so let's get to it. A while back, I put liquid metal on my EVGA <laughs> GTX 970 for the win plus to me that car always ran hot occasionally hitting up to 80 degrees Celsius and That's like playing battlefield 4 battlefield 1 anything graphically intensive It would get into the mid to high 70s up and bump into 80 every now and then to me that was hot I had to set a custom fan curve to keep it under 80 at all times uh, and then you know overclock and did all that stuff so and eventually I put it under water and I didn't have to worry about it anymore. But when I upgraded to a 980 Ti, I pulled the, I put the cooler back onto it and uh, well, I decided if I'm going to put the cooler back on because of the positive results that I had with the liquid metal on the RX 480 and that will be right here if you wanted to check that video out. Because of the positive re results with that one, well, I decided to give this a shot and said, why mess around with regular throwing paste? I already have the, the liquid metal, so I went for it. Then I moved the 970 into my mini computer, which is a great pairing with that i7-3610. Seems to run everything pretty great. But, well, it, tend to, it tended to run hot after the fact. The initial tests were 10C better than previous, uh, previous performance. Well, I don't know what happened because when we were running it during our 24 hour live stream, if you wanted to see a little bit more on that, you'll see another little thingy right here. When we were running it during that, that thing would get loud as heck. Those fans were cranking up like mad to keep that GPU cool. I had to do a custom fan curve again to keep it under control and even then it was still pretty loud the way that I had to do it. So at one point I ended up monitoring the temps a little better and seeing that playing Doom it actually got up to like 92 C and I'm like, that's it. I got to take this apart. I got to see what's going on. So I take it apart and you'll probably see the pictures popping up right here. The liquid metal dried, it dried up. It, it was it like bonded to the bottom of the cold plate on the heatsink. So, I mean, it says not to use it with aluminum. Yes, understandable, I get that. But this is what appeared to be copper. So everything should be good, right? I mean, that's how it was on the RX 480 that I did. That's how it was. Uh, I guess that's technically how it is when you like de-lid. Like uh, it's copper plate. It's not, well, it's copper, but it's plated, whatever. But either way, it should have been good. And it wasn't. Something caused it to dry up. I don't know what. Temps were going crazy. And it like bonded to the cold plate. I had to use sandpaper to clean it up. And again, you'll be seeing pictures right here. I had to use sandpaper to clean it up. Uh, off of the GP, uh, the GPU heatsink and the GPU die itself. Well, it was a little easier to clean up on that one, but still kind of tough. Just I had to soak it with alcohol for a little bit and use a rough paper towel and then clean it up really good after that. So I went back and put some of my extra thermal paste I had lying around, um, which I grabbed was uh, EK Ecotherm, I believe. It's the thermal paste that comes with the EK Fluid Gaming A240 kit. And well, the temps were a lot better. It was back to normal from what I was used to, hitting into the mid 70s. But then I put a custom fan curve on it where it didn't get too loud and uh, it won't go beyond 70C now. And I'm perfectly happy with that. That's right where it should be, I think. And uh, yeah, so I'm not sure what happened with that. I just wanted to talk, to talk to you guys a little bit about that, share my experience with it. I've had positive results with liquid metal and now I have my first negative result with it. Fortunately, I didn't lose the graphics card, nothing went wrong and everything is still good to go. So uh, yeah, I mean, look, this is not the same graphics card, but when you're playing around with graphics cards and stuff like that, it's risky because these are expensive parts. This is an old GTX, 460 that I you know we use as a, as a spare spare parts for testing and stuff like that or in case the GPU goes out and uh, Well, I changed the liquid metal on the 560 Ti the one right here as a matter of fact not the liquid metal rather but the GPU thermal paste and I didn't use liquid metal and I think at this point now that was a good call because I don't know the quality of GPU heat sinks if they're copper plated with some other material or if they're low purity or if they're mixed with another material 
Um, I don't know how, how that works in, or if that's what's going on and that's why this happened. But, um, but yeah, anyway, so it's kind of a good thing as a matter of fact that my 970 Forther and Plus recently just went out of warranty. I didn't lose it. I didn't have to deal with any, any hassles with it. So, you know, thanks. God bless on that one. Shoot. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, I, like I said, just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about that. Uh, a little lighter content uh, at the moment because, uh, you know, Christmas break, everybody's busy. But we will be doing a build off of our giveaway computer that was recently awarded to Twitch streamer Heartbreaker TV. And uh, great news that he is going to be paying it forward to a good friend of his as a Christmas gift. So great to see all this stuff getting, paying, uh, getting paid forward. And uh, yeah, it's one of the reasons I like the PC gaming community because we're always trying to look out for each other. Anyways, if you guys like this video, click that like button, click that subscribe button. If you wanna see more, check out our other videos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.